All right, we are here today with our all new Revenant amplifier upgrade. And this is a 1300 watt DSP powered amplifier uh, made specifically for your BMW. Uh, it includes a plug and play harness, uh, a bracket where applicable, um, which is everything you need to drop this right into your car. Um, we have with us today an F30 BMW. This one's a 328i, but the installation is the same across the F30, um, F32 4 series, so on and so forth. We're also going to be using this as a general guide for those of you um, who may not have a video specific for your car. The installation is largely the same across a variety of BMWs. So there's one very important thing I want to touch on before we go further in the installation, and that is the control button on the amp here. Uh, for your uses, there's nothing else you need to worry about here. Um, the only thing would be if you're adding an external subwoofer and amp, that's covered in, a, in separate documentation. But for those of you watching, the one thing you will have to do is with this control button, select what tune you'll be using. We have two tunes loaded onto this amplifier. One is for if you have your standard speakers. One is for the BAV sound speakers. Um, there's a couple little exceptions to that. There's a quick start guide that comes with your amplifier that covers this in more detail, and we'll be covering it in more detail later in the video. But I did just wanna make sure to mention that here so you don't skim through the video, miss setting this tune before you install everything and have to go back in your car. We also have with us our BAV sound toolkit. This is not included, uh, just as some of you may have these tools at home. It is an option at checkout, it includes everything you need to get into the trunk of this, or get behind the carpeted panel in the trunk of this car, I should say, to get access to your amplifier. Um, also includes everything you need to install one of our speaker upgrades. It's just a nice little kit. Um, it should be an option during the checkout process for you. Um, and let's dive into getting access to the amp, which is behind this carpeted panel. So the first thing we are gonna do is take out this carpeted panel. Just lifts up and out. I'll set that off to the side here. And dive into removing this rearward plastic panel, which holds down this side of the carpet here. This is held in, um, and this might be a little hard to capture on camera, hopefully it's coming through for you guys, by four plastic, uh, locking uh, kind of, we're gonna call those rivets. Uh, and the way to remove these is with our metal panel removal tool or an equivalent tool you have at home. You'll come in behind this upper headpiece. This will slot in here. This slides out at this point and that is ready to be removed as well. We're actually going to have them just leave it in and then lift that out because that's hard to get out without scraping the plastic. Oh, maybe it's not. Okay, we're going to use my fingernail. Let's just reshoot that real quick. Okay. I can just edit it right at that point. Okay, yeah. if you want. Cool. All right, with that carpeted panel removed, the next thing we're gonna tackle is this rearward plastic panel. Uh, it's held in by four plastic rivets here. The way we are gonna remove these is there's this upper head piece to it. We'll take our metal panel removal tool, slide that in behind this piece here. This will slide out. And then just with your fingernail or anything that lets you get behind here, You'll lift these out. Uh, we're going to do that four times. Again, there's one, two, three, four. And we will come back when I have those out so you guys don't have to watch me do that. All right, with our four plastic rivets removed, this is ready to come out. At this point, all this is held in with is this rubber trunk seal here. Um, typically, I don't recommend unseating that. You can if you want. The technique we're going to use is you're just going to come down and this will here. This carpet here will lift up. You don't have to remove this. We'll come up with this, lift it up and out, and then is out of the way. All right, with the plastic panel removed here, the next thing is to take out some of the plastic rivets holding this carpeted panel in. Um, the first two we're going to do, there's one up here, and there's one behind the tail light. Might be kind of hard to capture. They're gonna remove in the same way that we remove these plastic rivets holding that rear panel on. We're just gonna come in with our metal panel removal tool, slot in 
behind the head here. Might be a little hard for me to do blind. Try to keep my head out of the way of the camera. So this will lift out. And in this case, they don't separate as easily. So it kind of comes out like this. You can see the center portion, once this is in, pushes these outwards, locks it into place. I'll set that to the side. I'm gonna come up here. Give the camera a second to focus on that. Same thing here. Oh, can be a little tricky as you can see. You can kind of reorientate that to give yourself a bit better of an angle. Come in behind it, lift outwards. So this is now ready to pop, well, let's see, I might need a little bit more there. There we go. This is now ready to slide out. Again, the same design, they just have this little hook there for your luggage. Directly above that hook that we had there, there is one more plastic rivet hiding. Same technique, um, might be a little hard for the camera to capture this, but you know, come in here, pop that out. Hopefully that goes somewhere you can find it. That piece out and we are ready to move on. All right, the next thing we're gonna remove is this little luggage strap back here. If you wanna take that chrome D-ring, slide it back, grab our metal panel removal tool, put it under that plastic cover and pop upwards. That will reveal our bolt. And one thing missing in our install kit is that is a Torx T40 bolt we're looking at back there. Um, for our speaker installations, which is what this kit was originally designed for, that never comes into play. This is something we've seen in a couple of the newer BMWs with um, the tow hook being that T40. In a pinch, if you have our kit, the angle driver with the five millimeter um, hex head bit in there does work. We don't necessarily want to fully recommend this as it's not proper, works in a pinch. I'll show you it working here now. Um, but if you have a Torx T40 bit hanging out in your home collection, you'd want to use that in this case. So we'll take this guy here and go ahead and unscrew this. Once you get it to about here, you can just use that little ratcheting function. Let's see. Reach in. And this just lifts out. We'll set that off to the side. And we are ready to remove this carpeted panel, which is gonna give us access to our amp. Um, for those of you following along who may not have an, have an F30, as far as this guide goes, your trunk might look a little different. Uh, the plastic clips might be in slightly different places. You might have a couple extra. You might have one or two missing. Just logically look around, see what's holding it in. There's no hidden hardware typically. Make sure you look up here sometimes they're not necessarily hidden, but you'll have to bend down and look up, see what's in there. You'll be able to get into this in no problem. Or here, we'll, we'll do a little cut off. I messed up the wording there. So, you know, look up, see what you can find. You'll be able to get to that amplifier, no problem. So with all of that hardware out of the way, we are now ready to reveal the amplifier. So we'll reach down here gives the carpet a little bit more flex if we remove this plastic cover. This just lifts straight up, set that to the side. The carpet wraps around the trunk hinge here um, and is held in by the rubber seal here. Um, I recommend getting it out of that seal first. Kind of wiggle its way free here. Which gets us all to release. Then there's this plastic kind of clip system here um, the way to do this is simultaneously we'll have to lift up on the bottom carpet while pushing down on this to get everything to release. So let's see here. Can be a little tricky to do. But that will all eventually release and we still have the carpet secured at the front here, but this gives us a plenty of access. The cigarette lighter has came unplugged, as you can see. This is just a T-fitting style plug. It can only go on in one way. It just slides off the back here. Um, and we have access to our amplifier, or more accurately, 
the plastic covering on that. So we're gonna pause here, arrange some things so you guys can get a better camera angle, and we'll dive into getting that amplifier removed. With our carpet out of the way here, and it's still attached on the front, you guys can go in and get those last couple clips if you wanted. There's plenty of flex in it. We recommend just pushing it off to the side. It can be a little bit hard to realign up there. We're ready to get access to the amp that is covered by this plastic cover here, which is held on by a single 10 millimeter bolt. We have a 10 millimeter socket in our kit. Go ahead and just unscrew this. And then from here, there's this little plastic tab holding it in. If you just push forward on this, let's uh, make sure the camera gets that. So if you push forward on this, and then I have to lift it off its post back there, we can set that off to the side, which reveals our amplifier. All right, with that plastic covering removed, we are ready to get access to the amplifier. Um, for those of you with a eight millimeter wrench at home, uh, you can just get to the single eight millimeter bolt holding the amp in back here. Uh, for those of you with our toolkit, there's a single 10 millimeter bolt holding this bracket down. We'll see if we can get that on camera. It's a little bit dark. Um, it's right here if we're able to capture that. So we'll go ahead and take that out. So with that single 10 millimeter bolt holding this remaining bracket in, the whole bracket is going to slide forward, which will then release it and allow it to come up here. Um, so you can see we have our amplifier here from the factory. We have our ASD module. We're not doing anything with that at this time, but that does use the, utilize the same size or same style plug as the amplifier. Um, so let's go ahead just for visibility's sake, we'll get this amp off of here. That's held in by a single eight millimeter head bolt. We have our eight millimeter socket on our angle driver included in the Bav Sound Toolkit if you pick that up at checkout. The amp from here is held in by just these couple winglets and it goes into these channels. So we'll lift up on this. It'll be in there a little bit tight, that's normal. And we are now ready to unplug it. So hopefully this is well lit so you guys can get a shot. The plug has this lever on it that's held in by this little black plastic tab. Now my finger's gonna cover it when I press on it, but what you're gonna do is press that tab in which lets this lever slide down. As you can see, I just did that with one hand. It's pretty easy. I'll go over that one more time for you guys. So you press this little tab down while pulling downwards on the lever, which allows it to slide over it. You bring that all the way down so that it is parallel with the bottom of the plug. And this slides out and your factory amp is out of the car. We are now ready to install your Bavsound Revenant amplifier. Um, so for video purposes, typically in the car, you'll bolt this down, get it all into place, and then you'll set the tune via the control button. We're gonna do it hanging out loose so that you can see me doing it and in the lights and how it's gonna blink. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do here is plug the harness in. So you'll take our harness, it has its channels that line up with this. It can be a little finicky to get to line up, but it does indeed go. So you'll wanna push in so this is all the way down flush with this lever before you do anything else. So I'll show you that one more time. So with that flush all the way down while still applying force downwards, if you pull up on the lever, you'll notice the plug pulls itself into that and is locked into place at that point. Um, if it's still loose at this point, you'll wanna redo that process. But once it's locked in, we are ready to set the tune on the amp via the control button. We'll have to pause here. You'll have to put the vehicle um, into its accessory power mode and or start it if you're working in an open area. And then we'll get that tune set before buttoning everything back up. 
we have our amplifier fully plugged in. It's got this black plug to your factory harness, fully seated, that's super tight. We've got these two white plugs fully seated into the amplifier. The locking tabs are locked into place and we are ready to set the tune on your amp. The way to do this is we've powered on the vehicle. You can either put this into accessory power mode or you can actually start the car if you're in a well-ventilated area. Um, and then we wanna wait a couple minutes, just let it initialize, go get a drink, call your buddy, whatever you need to do. And then we are ready to set the tune. So by default, the amp will come with the standard tune loaded. This is if you have these standard speakers and subwoofers in your car, you haven't done the bass sound upgrades yet. We've still written a brilliant tune for that, designed specifically for those speakers. And if that's the case, you are ready to install this. The status LED is green, which means that tune is loaded. If you've done the bass sound upgrades, meaning the speakers and subwoofers, or you have a Harman Kardon car, you're gonna to want to load the second tune, which is the orange status LED. All this is covered in the quick start guide included with your amplifier, and we really do recommend going and reading through that. It covers everything you need to know, as well as this in detail, but we just wanted to show you the video here of how to switch these. So let's say this vehicle has the full BAV sound upgrade equipped, so we need to switch from the standard tune, which is indicated by this green status LED, to the BAV sound tune. The way to do that is by holding this control button just for a second until we get two red LED flashes. At this point, the amp is gonna be loading the alternate tune. It takes a couple seconds more, and then you can see it has switched to this orange LED, which means the BAV sound tune has been loaded. Now let's say you accidentally did this or for whatever reason when you powered the amp on it was showing this orange LED but you only have these standard speakers and subwoofers. You'll wanna go ahead and swap. Again, same process. You just hold the control button down until you get two red flashes, release it, wait a few seconds and it will load the other tune, in this case the standard one. And then the way to tell what tune is loaded is if you just do nothing for about 10 seconds and wait, whatever color that LED is indicates which tune you have. Again, the best chart to reference um, which tune you need, whether you have the full BAV sound upgrades, Harman Kardon standard, or a mix in between, we have everything covered in that quick start guide that was included with the amplifier. And if for some reason you're still not sure after that, feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email. Now with this set, um, this vehicle actually currently has the standard speakers and subwoofers, so we're gonna leave that status LED to green. We are ready to bolt the amplifier into place and get up and rocking. So now with that tune set and the status LED in the correct configuration, we are ready to put the amp back in the car. And for those of you following an F30, your bracket's gonna look exactly like this. For those of you maybe watching this video who have a different car, it's going to be something similar. The setup might be a little bit different. Um, so what we need to do as we're lining this up is there's these little winglets on the back of the amp, hopefully the video is picking that up, that coordinate to these channels. So what we need to do is as you are pushing the amp down, let's see here, oh, the wiring's going to be kind of in the way but you will need to get to a point where these are lined up. That's gonna be a little hard to do with the wiring. So you can see these are all slotted into the channels and you'll push downward. And then you can see the screw holes lined up here. Might take a little extra force and that amp is seated. Now the screw is obviously gonna hold this all into place, which again is that eight millimeter bolt. Take that here. Snug that down, grab our angle driver. All right, and it is time to place this bracket back down. Some of you might've just done this with this in the car or the bracket still on the car, either way works. So the way that this is gonna line up there's the post that the 10 millimeter nut came off of that goes into this slot here. And the other parts of the bracket, let's see if we can capture that, line up with these kind of studs that are in the car. Um, it's gonna be a little bit hard to capture. It's probably dark in there, but in person, this should be very obvious. So the way I like to do this is you take the whole bracket down 
and you, you'll get that stud in that slot I just pointed out and push the bracket fully forward. From here, with that lined up, we have the stud that the 10 millimeter nut is gonna go onto. Again, this is gonna be really hard to capture on video. This is probably dark for you guys. You'll push the amplifier backwards, or I should say the amplifier and hold bracket backwards, locking it into place. Now, this is pretty well lit. Do you wanna come, come down here, Kobe? And you can see that stud is firmly locked into the bracket. So you can see that is firmly locked into place. And it is time to put the 10 millimeter nut back onto its stud, just as we removed it. Again, this is gonna be hard to capture, but it'll be obvious in person. Very exciting. Maybe Kobe's gonna do some slick editing so you guys don't have to watch this, or maybe you are. It's hard to say. All right, that is snug back down. We wanna take this plug here, and you can just tuck that off to the side, and we will grab our plastic cover, which again, you'll line it up. It goes, at least on the F30 that we're filming, again, this is gonna be slightly different if, you're, if you have a different vehicle. It goes on that outer hole pushes down into place, covers our amplifier under that storage tray. Grab that 10 millimeter nut. And our bath sound 10 millimeter socket and handle. And we will snug that down into place. Take a quick pause here and then we will put this carpet back on. The amplifier is installed. We've got this plastic bracket on here. It is time to reinstall the carpet. Um, at least for this F30, we do have the cigarette lighter to plug back in. Your vehicle may not have this, so that may vary slightly for you. So as we get closer here, we will take this wiring. Uh, I I got to get the carpet a little bit further in before we can do this. Again, it kind of helps to pinch as you go up. So if you want to come back here, Kobe, you can actually see this connection. It's just a T-style plug. And let's see if that's what it just slots right onto the cigarette lighter easy as could be it's just a pressure fit there's no locking tab or anything like that and then you can keep going further in with the carpet we're gonna have to pull this around the trunk hinge this guy here lines up there's these two little plastic slots that this will line into it can be a little tricky You'll basically be able to push and get that to click into place. What I like to do first um, is, so the carpet you can see here has came out of the seal. We'll get that lined up in the seal and then that typically, that plastic will pop in a little bit easier. This will have to come around the metal here. Very, very exciting stuff. So you'll pop this plastic piece back together. You can hear it click into place. This is all lined up and it is time to start reinstalling the clips. So you can take this cover, probably put that in the right orientation. This will just slot right back down. And we'll start up here. We have this hook style clip. We're actually gonna put that in after this upper clip. So let's see if we can get the camera there. So again, this style, you want this pulled fully out, it will stop. So what I like to do is I kind of pinch on the actual shaft so that it doesn't go in as you're pushing up, which can make it hard to seat. So let's see here. And it's okay, you can actually see this, this separate into two pieces, that's totally fine. And get 
so just out slightly. So with that lined up and this pushed into place, we'll take that and while applying upwards pressure, slot that in and that's all locked into place. You'll take this hook style, which goes right below it, push that in, locked into place. Then we got one more to go back here behind the taillight, again, into two pieces. We'll push that base in first and then lock it into place. It's probably be easier if my head was in the trunk, but then you guys can't see me fumbling around. All right. Then the next thing we'll do, before we forget, you'll take this carpeted panel here and lift that back out and over. And we will install the luggage hook. So that just goes back here. Pushes down into place. Again, we got that bolt to deal with. And we're gonna take a little bit of movie magic pause here. I'm gonna tighten that down and I'll show you how that plastic cover goes back on. All right, so we've got this bolt snug down. You don't have to go overly tight with it. And we got this plastic cover here with that hook in the upward position. The cover will just go on and line up, click into place, hook goes down, and we are ready to put this rearward plastic panel back on. All right. So with this piece, the first little step here, you lift that carpet up, it slots under, and you align it here. Now this gets a little tricky. So we want this seated down as far as we can get it. You can see that it hasn't gotten to this rubber channel yet. And while starting over here or either side, just kind of with your fingers, pull back the rubber and start slotting it into place. And then you'll just follow it the whole way across and you'll see it kind of cinch down and lock itself into place. I'm sure someone out there has found a way to use a tool to do this rather than their fingers and will make me look silly, but this works and especially in your guys' case it will work as well. And you're only here for about 20 seconds. And you see, once you get to that end there, it drops. It's all seated fully. It's over the carpet here. This is all sitting as it did before. And it is time to put these four plastic clips back in. Same as we just did on the carpet. And again, this may vary slightly if you're not doing this in an F30, but everything goes back together the same way it came out. We'll take this piece here, get that lined up, pushed into place. Take the top piece, push that in, it locks it into place. Repeat that three more times. I'm not going to show you that as that's very simple for you guys. Take your carpet, put that back into place. Your car is fully reinstalled. You've set the tune. I know you set the tune. We covered that part. You've referenced the quick start guide to know which tune you put on and you are enjoying great sound in your BMW like you've never heard before.